Hey backers, this is Ryan O'Hara here. Just wanted to let everybody know that now that about 98% of our orders have shipped, uh, many people have been writing in and asking, hey, I got my matrix, but how do I control it? And I'm hoping through this quick little video I can uh, go through some of the basics and get you all started. So please bear with us and we'll go from there. All right, depending on the ward you receive, you should basically get a matrix. Here we have an eight by eight, and then we have two power connectors. Then we have two SIL headers. We have a servo cable for connecting to our microcontroller to control the LEDs. So really, the only tools you will need besides the parts that are given to you are gonna basically be some solder wire to allow you to make the solder connections to the matrix and a soldering iron. In this case, I have a digital weller um, that's set to about 700 degrees. All right, so we're basically we're going to take our matrix and we're going to flip it over. We're going to take these small three pin headers and we're going to solder them into the back of the matrix. Now, when we originally spec these boards and proof them, they were nice and wide open, specifically these plated holes. Here. However, in our production boards, they're a little tighter than we expected. However, they're still functional, but they do require you to basically work the header back and forth in a little bit. Subsequent boards uh, for our next production runs will be a lot wider, but this shouldn't be an issue uh, for you now. So once those are installed, we're basically going to take our soldering iron we have here. Okay, and we're gonna take a little bit of solder wire from over here, trim some of that off. And we're basically going to quickly solder the connections here. Basically, you're just gonna heat up the pin and apply a little bit of solder and then you should be all set. All right, now really for our purposes, the board just basically has a data in side and a data out side. Uh, really, we only need the data in connection because we're only gonna control one. If you wanted to hook multiple of these uh, up, you would use the data out and hook up another cable. Uh, another common question that has come up is the need f uh, or the question about, up here we have these larger power inputs. We have five volt and ground. Well, these are all connections that are provided. Basically, it allow you to hook up multiple matrices. And then they also allow for a low voltage drop because of the large um, gauge of the wire. They are connected to a power plane, so five volts on the top and a ground power plane on the back. And so they're all connected and that includes the signal inputs as well. So once we have these connections made, we're gonna go ahead and add our wired connections. When I make wired connections, I like to keep the data input inside. So I typically use these uh, mail pin cables on the data inside and basically all we're going to do is put those in and I find it's best to solder these one at a time if you have the option to control the temperature of your soldering iron I do recommend um, making the temperature be about 800 degrees so basically all we're gonna do is feed in quite a bit of solder here. All right, connections made. Now we'll go ahead and add the ground wire. All 
basically all I'm doing is uh, just placing that in there so it'll kind of stay put as I rest it down. As you can see, it's a little bit difficult doing this behind the camera, but the pin or the cable itself wants to come out a little bit. The idea is to basically to get a, a, a lot of solder on there and then spread it around. Cable will cable on the ground plane will try and suck away the heat. All right, for our purposes, we would basically do the other side, but for what we're going to do today, uh, we don't really need to. Okay. All right, now to test out our boards, I basically have an Arduino clone here. This Arduino, uh, I've added a 100 ohm resistor to the back of this board, and that's on the Digital 6 line and is compatible with uh, many of the Adafruit examples and also the repository we have on GitHub for control with Arduino. And then I've also hooked up ground and power on the back side of this. And so um, very similar to your kit, this is basically just a longer servo wire that uh, makes for testing of the boards a little bit easier. Okay. But basically I'm gonna take this um, input from the Arduino, I'm gonna plug it into the input of the matrix Okay, and then um, typically when I add this, it causes the Arduino to go into bootloader mode because we are powering the matrix directly from the Arduino. This could be good. Uh, the signal pins that we call are able to provide up to one amp of current. So when we're testing out these boards, I have a cycle that runs through each of the red, green, and blue colors. And when we do this, uh, it allows us to basically test the functionality of the board and does not exceed the one amp capacity of the LEDs. There's been a number of talk about current on the forum and you can see that in the calculation but basically each channel or red uh, requires 16 milliamps, green 16 as well and blue 16 as well. So each pixel could draw up to 48 milliamps at full brightness. So adds up pretty quickly and uh, the wattage and the current ratings for the board um, vary anywhere from 3 to 16 amps at full white. So. We don't really recommend running them that high. They're super bright. They generate a lot of heat, and uh, you certainly could if you would like, but um, we find that maybe about a quarter of brightness is usually pretty sufficient for what most people need. Thanks for your time, and uh, hopefully this helps people out.